Standing seam metal roofing is versatile enough to be used in many applications, including open framing. Today we're going to discuss profile selection, the differences between architectural and structural, testing requirements, and more. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel, I'm Thad Barnett. Subscribe if you're new, we release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Today we're talking about open framing applications for standing seam metal roofing. All the questions that we discussed will be in the description down below. You can jump ahead using those quick links. I have Jeff Hawk from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department with me, and we are going to jump right in. All right, Jeff, so the first question I have for you is, what does open framing mean, and what, ty what types of buildings do you see that on uh, typically? Open framing basically means that you don't have a deck to attach your panels to. You're going to be t attaching them to supports. They're going to be Z purlins, usually 16 gauge for structural applications. Buildings that you will see them on are warehouses. If you ever looked at like hangars, airport hangars for small planes, things like that, you'll see them a lot too on, you know, porches. A lot of times porches don't have decking in. Uh, those are usually made with wood purlins. The idea behind open framing is that you don't, you do not have a deck that you're attaching the panel to and you are spanning some kind of purlin structure, whatever that may be made out of. Do you sometimes see open framing on like agricultural applications, barns, things like that? Yeah, a lot of times. And, uh, you know, a lot of times they do ag agricultural or ag panels on those situations. You know, ag panels are face fast and screw down roofs compared to what, you know, we mainly get into with the standing seam roofs. But yeah, absolutely. Their purlin spaces are usually a little bit closer. Common purlin spacing is around five foot. Uh, but in those situations, they'll put the, uh, the purlins a little bit closer so that way they can have a tighter screw panel when they uh, put it on. A couple terms that we hear when it comes to open framing is architectural and structural. Tell me about what the difference between those two terms are and how they relate. Okay, so structural is going to be in an open framing application. I mean, that's where you are counting on your roof to be the outer structure of your building. It's going to take any loads that are on your building, whether they be live loads or dead loads, um, you know, snow loads or mechanical equipment. You know, the structural portion of the roof has to support all those. Uh, they'll usually build up those areas where they have those uh, like mechanical units and things like that with extra framing to be able to support the heavier units. But other than that, the panel that is going to be spanning the purlins has to be able to support the structural load that uh, the building is going to require. Now on the flip side, you have architectural panels, which is a waterproofing type aspect. And it's, you know, for aesthetics as well, but your roof decking, whatever the, that may be, whether it's plywood, OSB, metal decking, uh, that's going to take the structural load of what the roof is going to be handling. You're talking about panels. What about panel profile selection? Uh, what types of panels can you use in open framing application? So the only panel Sheffield offers uh, for over open framing is the two inch mechanical. It's a two inch high vertical leg. It has a 180 degree seam and that's our structural panel. There are other panels in the industry uh, that are offered. Usually they're uh, maybe a T panel that has the proper testing, uh, trapezoidal panels, things like that. Most of the time when you come across uh, open framing situations, it's usually at lower slopes, below a 212. So you not only need a panel that's going to handle and be able to perform to the structural requirements, but you need one that's also going to be able to handle the low slope and the hydrostatic conditions that the roof is going to exceed as well. Sure. And we know that because the two inch is a mechanical seam, it can handle that lower pitch. But what are some other qualities that that particular panel has that you can use it for open framing? Is it the high leg? What is it? Yeah, it's a, it has a taller leg and, you know, it seems to be what, you know, the taller the, the legs are on the panel, the stronger it is. And with the 180 degree seam, we also do a test that's called foot traffic testing. And basically they put a concentrated load on the center of the panel. And that's, that's basically for when you're up there installing on it. You want to make sure if you have a five foot span and your panel spanning that, that, that's the only thing between you and the ground at this point, you know, so you want to make sure that it's going to stay together uh, while you're up there working and installing the roof and you know maintenance in the future and things like that. Yeah, tell me more about the testing. What kind of testing requirements are is out there? What kind of tests are available 
for open framing structural applications? So, so the main difference between structural and architectural uh, testing is the uplift testing that it goes through. The architectural testing that you know we've talked about plenty of times before in the videos is a, is a UL 580, UL 1897 test. It's a 10 by 10 specimen. You, you know, it has whatever decking it is you're testing over and you build it just like you would out in the field. Well, that's the same thing we do with open framing testing, but that test is now called ASTM E1592. Uh, the difference is instead of a 10 by 10 assembly that you build, you, it's 12 foot by 24 foot long. And the reason it has to be larger, one of the main reasons it has to be larger is that you have to be able to put these purlin spans maybe five feet apart. So, you know, if you only had a 10 by 10 specimen, you'd have your, where the panel begins, five foot in the center, and then where the panel ends, that's not really showing you the, how the panel's gonna perform when it's going over, you know, more spans. So um, most of the testing requires you to be over three or more spans. So if you're testing at five foot, well, now you have a 15 foot minimum assembly that you're doing, you know, and, and again, obviously, you know, with the testing, um, there's no decking there to stop any of that pressure from underneath the panels or to slow it down. So most of the time, from my experience, the open framing panels that are tested don't get as high numbers as you would say over a solid deck. Um, you know, you don't have the underlayment, you don't have the decking. So all that, all that pressure has nothing to stop it from, you know, exerting on those panel um, systems that you're installing. You know, that's, that's the main difference. When it comes down to water tightness, same test still apply as far as or your architectural panels do. You have 1646 water penetration, you have 2140 submersion testing. You really want to make sure that your open framing project is uh, tested in accordance with the proper water standards because now you don't have a deck or underlayment to stop any water from getting inside of your building. That is literally the only barrier you have for as far as weather tightness or water tightness goes. The other test that we talked about is uh, the FM4471 foot traffic, which is uh, specific in this portion to open framing because again, you're counting on the panel to support the load that's up there instead of a deck. So I believe it's 250 pounds concentrated in the center of a panel. And does uh, open framing structural panels, they require a heavier gauge? What's, the, what's that look like? Uh, it depends on the panel profile. You will see uh, 24 gauge panels used. That's what we tested was a 24 gauge panel. A lot of times you'll see 22 gauge panels. When you're talking about mobile roll forming, you won't really see anything higher than 22 because most mobile roll formers can't roll form panels thicker than 22 gauge you might see narrower panel widths, heavier gauges, narrower widths that will help provide strength and when you're spanning longer uh, purlin spans. And just talking about uplift testing with open framing, usually what uh, people do is they'll test five foot as their maximum and then they'll also test at one foot. So you have a one foot purlin spacing and a five foot purlin spacing. Um, you know what those numbers are and then the engineers can do the calculations to figure out what the pressures would be for foot and a half, two foot, two and a half foot, three foot, and so on and so forth, all the way up to uh, five foot. And, a, and another thing that's changed is all the uplift testing now has a 50% safety factor. So you have a, it's a 2.0 safety factor. So if you have, you know, UL90 design pressure is a negative 52 and a half. So if you have a 100 test pressure, you cut it in half, you don't meet UL90. You only have a 50% safety of uh, a 50 design pressure. Um, when I first started in the business, it was a 1.65 or 1.67 safety factor for open framing. Uh, so with that being changed and them upping the higher safety factor, it makes it even harder to get those numbers to uh, the UL90 requirements. What about other assemblies? Does, do you see insulation used in open framing applications, anything like that? You will. Um, usually in open framing, you're going to see blanket insulation uh, where it's compressible. So if you ever looked up in a warehouse and you've seen those big white pillows um, coming down in between the purlins, that's usually blanket insulation. Um, another thing with specific to open framing is you'll usually use an offset clip. So it actually holds the panel um, 
maybe a half inch to an inch above where it's being attached to the purlin. A couple of reasons for that is one, to accommodate that blanket insulation. So it compresses down and it, you know, you can hook the pearl, uh, clip to the purlin and still have the blanket insulation between the panel and the purlin itself. And two is uh, what they call purlin chatter. And that's if you have a metal panel sitting flat onto a metal purlin, any type of wind or movement the panel is going to go through, it's going to smack against that uh, metal purlin. And that's, they call it purlin chatter because it's going to be noisy. So floating it up in half an inch or an inch off the deck um, or off the purlin, I should say, is going to alleviate and let that panel be able to flex without smacking into that purlin the whole time. And, so we've been talking about metal purlins so far, but what about wood framing? Does that make a difference when it comes to testing and open framing applications? Yeah, it, well, it absolutely does. Um, the testing is only as good as the substrate you tested over. So if I if I have testing for 16 gauge Z purlins, that doesn't mean my testing is gonna be applicable to a pressure treated, you know, two by four, four by four. Does that mean that you can't, there aren't ways around it? There are. Uh, you can do pull-out value calculations and have engineers sign off on basically what the pull-out value is with that fastener into a 16-gauge purlin compared to a 2x4 or 4x4. Um, but honestly, a lot of times, you know, especially when we're talking about people in the country and doing barns and things like that, um, they aren't too concerned with engineering. But when you get into more commercial projects, um, you know, warehouses, things like that, you know, those are going to be where you're going to see a lot more of the engineering requirements uh, specified and whatnot. And most of the time that those are going to actually be, you know, the 16 gauge or heavy, you know, or heavier purlins. But I mean, there's all types of different open framing out there, whether it be wood, whether it be light gauge framing, uh, whether it be, you know, the heavy red iron uh, Z purlins, things like that. Um, it's, it's the same as, you know, when we talk about any other type of testing, just make sure that, when you, even if you're using testing or if you require it, that the test that uh, you're, you're getting provided is going to be applicable to the assembly that you're going over. So we've been talking about open framing. We've mentioned architectural panels over solid decking. But what about when it comes to uh, installing uh, slats or two by fours or something over solid decking when it comes to a re-roof situation and then putting panels on top of that? Because that's kind of a uh, in the middle situation tell me about that yeah no it, it absolutely is it's uh you know you have the decking so you have the the building has its structural performance but then you know technically the metal panels are still spanning the purlins that they're being put on i personally don't know of anybody that has testing like that but things that i would keep in mind if you do decide to go that route are uh you know number one Depending on how far apart your purlins are spaced or your your, your open your wood framing is spaced or your uh, furring strips as they're called, again, you want to make sure that you're going to be able to walk on those and not have the panel disengage or, uh, you know, hurt the panel in any way. So, again, you know, mechanical locks would probably be better in that situation more so than maybe snap locks because, you know, especially some snap locks, the way they're designed, um, you might be able to disengage the male and female leg by the way you step on them and things like that. You know, another thing I would definitely be uh, concerned about and, and pay attention to is, you know, walking on those panels. Uh, you step the wrong way on say a two by four. Well, now you have a nice crease in the flat of your panel. There, there are things that come into play now that you are spanning uh, furring strips that you're going to want to take into consideration as far as panel attributes. Well, I think we covered a lot when it comes to open framing and general overview on testing requirements and the differences between architectural and structural. Make sure you comment down below if you have any questions for us. Love to answer them. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel for more videos just like this one. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.